Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. For this round of readings, I've been pulling a card from Brian Froud's Fairies Oracle. And you got this Singer of the Chalice. Uh, keeping to the Grail cup theme that we've had going. And you, Scorpio, you have been doing some work. Um, your last reading came up as reluctance to share, but you are, you may not be sharing, but you are really, you are doing some work. We begin with this Nine of Stones card. The subtitle is Tradition, but really what comes up here is this deeply meditative, introspective journeying thing that this person is doing under the light of the moon. This last full moon that we just had, um, two days ago, was in Gemini, conjunct the retrograde Mars. And traditionally, Mars is domiciled in Scorpio. He is, I think of him as right, the, the co-owner of the space along with Pluto. So your, right, your, your person, Mars, has been moving retrograde through Gemini, through the space of mind. And I think you are really examining things that you may have thought of as forever, right, with this tradition card, things that were not just stable, but as, you know, sort of as bedrock, things that you considered perhaps unchangeable. Because we have both the four of bows and the four of vessels, and then at the end of this line, we have the four of arrows. So wands, cups, and swords. Interestingly, the only four uh, that doesn't show up here is the Four of Pentacles. I think you've been really examining your beliefs, your assumptions, what you thought of as true for yourself. Um, examining what you thought you had to do, right? We have this Queen of Vessels, Queen of Cups, but I'm particularly drawn to the fact that she, right, this is a salmon, right? Returning to the spawning ground, uh, leaping upstream. And today it's coming up as maybe something that's not necessary. necessary for the salmon, but perhaps not necessary for you, Scorpio, that maybe you've been doing something that was difficult, uh, that was a struggle, but that you thought was necessary, foundational to how you needed to move through the world, right? The next card is this Ten of Vessels, right? Ten of Cups happiness, right? And there's just this water pouring out. So I feel as if, right, you've been, you've been thinking about this, right, in this four of cups, the water is just trickling. And then there's this, you know, consideration of the salmon, and then there's this gushing. 
And then we come back to this other four that is an introspective four, right? Do you, in fact, need to be pinned to the ground? Or can you be like the butterfly here? And this contemplation continues here in this next card. As, right, you're sitting here contemplating this beautiful flowers that are down there. Maybe you've never really noticed them before. Maybe you've been sitting on this wall, staring off into space or waiting for something, struggling with something. And then you look down and there's this flower that you've, you've just never seen before. And here, again, I think this is you sort of, right? You're, you're, you're kind of looking at yourself, looking at this flower. So there's this whole, this whole introspective uh, witnessing, uh, stepping outside of oneself to, to view things from an outside perspective. And then we get the Four of Swords again. So there's also a kind of, um, not just repetition, but, you know, kind of seeing something, contemplating about it, and then returning to the deep space in order to uncover things. Right, for me, this tower, it always seems like somebody has flipped open the top of this tower, right? It's like a box, a treasure chest, and someone has flipped it open to see what is inside, that it's an uncovering, a revelation. And the two cards that follow are this very um, vibrant Knight of Cups and this Seven of Cups. And it feels to me, right, as you are this knight and this contemplation, this reassessment of all these things that you thought of as permanent or real or foundational or unchangeable, that now you are ceasing to feel right that this is so, and you are mounting up to join up with your dreams, right? With, the, with this Seven of Cups dreams of possibilities. Right? These may have seemed unattainable or impossible or frivolous. Um, you know, especially in the current situation. You know, I know Scorpio, <clears throat> you can get very serious about things. Um, on the Taurus Scorpio axis, Taurus is you know, sort of in some ways, the more easygoing, you know, emotionally, right? The moon is exalted, very comfortable in Taurus. Uh, right, the, the moon in Taurus um, can, right, lie around in a field of flowers, um, taking in the sweetness in a way that a Scorpio moon right, might have trouble with that. But here you are, you are, you know, rather than, than the King of Cups, which is sort of your traditional card, is this Knight of Cups. Uh, more dynamic than you might feel on a regular basis ready to go. And he comes underneath this 10 of vessels, 10 of cups, pouring. 
Now you may not quite be in this Knight of Cups energy yet. I think that that is actually to come because we still have, we have this clarity card, right? This figure sleeping and right underneath her is this lake depth card. And we are still in this stillness space, I think, before things start to move Mars at the time of this reading is retrograde moving. He will continue to move retrograde until January. So it's possible that this, right, that you're not yet in this Knight of Cups, that you're still in this searching reassessment mode. Reassessing things you've believed to be true, things that people told you were true, things that you thought you had to do in order to uh, be a good person, uh, to find fulfillment. Um, so you may, right, you may still be in this uh, reassessment phase. And I think you are also, I think it's, right, you're reassessing emotional aspects. You know, how you engage with your emotions but you're also reassessing how you engage with your thoughts with this air motion card. Um, Gemini, the sign of Gemini is Quinquunx, Scorpio, which is, right, it's just, right, it's one sign off of, of opposition. And that can be a, a kind of vexing, irritating, nails on a chalkboard kind of energy, or it can really open up new avenues, right? It can lead to innovative ways of thinking about things. And you have also here this endurance rock energy. And I feel as if these two cards are sort of reassessing what these things mean to you. What does speed and motion mean to you? Um, how do you engage with your thoughts? How do you engage with what, uh, what you see as your stability? Are there, right, is there a way to have stability simultaneously with motion? Can you have stability and growth simultaneously? You know, is, right, this tree kind of lives in what looks like a bubble. But it isn't really a bubble, right? It's like a star map, right? This tree isn't really contained. The tree could let its roots, you know, grow larger so that the, the tree itself can grow larger. Right, there is a need with trees to have a sufficient root system to support a bigger crown. But, right, there isn't really a, you know, the limitation perhaps that you think there is. Right, and that these roots can, you know, find their way even in stone. Or what appears to be stone. Right, a reassessment of Earth, um, this joining with Taurus on the other side, this complementary energy that you and Taurus can combine forces in order to manifest what, what you want. Because as, as Scorpio, you might not have a lot of material dreams as such, perhaps, maybe. Um, you might not need, you know, a, a, you know, a particular home or even a particular job, right? Your material wants, right, your physical wants might be different. 
but it may be that you've still been denying yourself because of beliefs that you have you know about stuff about materialism about what it means to be scorpio um about your place in the world all kinds right you might have all kinds of beliefs having to do with these these sort of earthly matters and uh now you are reassessing them and you may be reassessing you know what it means right what your power really is with this dark matter mystery card you know reassessing how how matter comes into being you know what does it mean to create your own reality what does it mean right how how do resources come to be i think all of this is up for reassessment and re-examination that there may be way more available than you've thought in the past so um, this next underlying these actually sort of next two cards they're from a new deck that i just got it's really cool it's the surrealist tarot and it does, um, in some ways, you know, digress from the usual tarot meanings, but the cards are um, very detailed and, of course, you know, surreal images. And there's lots and lots of stuff in them. So the underlying is this Eight of Cups. Right, this looking towards... And I think, right, this is you sort of looking out from, from this newly examined space. And the card underneath, or the brother that came out, is this Seven of Wands. And what I'm struck by, particularly, is the, the, each one has a hand in it. And in this one, the hand has this ball, and this one, the hand, you know, is holding this wand. And I feel like this is talking really about your ability to right, create something that you want. And with this figure uh, dressed in red, that this creation is really heartfelt. Right? That it comes from, you know, a passionate place. And that it is a, actually a physical manifestation, um, you know, where that has, that is related to your physical life, you know, because red is the color of the root chakra, our basis, the place of creation of the physical, our stability, our ability to receive that which we want and i think you are finding scorpio through this process a much greater capacity for creation than maybe you thought you had that in concert with taurus across the way right mars and venus in combination Right? Creation with Mars and Venus together. That there is much more possible for you than you've been telling yourself. So I didn't, you know, I asked for a little bit. Oh, and actually, I'm, I am going to mention, I don't always do it, but 
the world is at the bottom of this surrealist deck. It peeked out just now to remind me. So a, a whole, right, a whole new world may be emerging for you, Scorpio, as you come to realize your own capabilities, your own powers. And so I did, all right, I asked for advice and I, you know, I think it's kind of implicit here in the reading, but you know, I got this, right, Eight of Swords, um, and then the Five of Cups is under that, and the Ten of Swords under that, uh, with ten, the Nine of Pentacles. Um, so essentially, right, you are, right, you're doing, you're doing the work, right? And then the cards are the High Priestess, the Three of Cups, and the Moon. So I see this as just keep on doing what you're doing, Scorpio. Keep on examining, going deep, um, really questioning, questioning uh, are, you know, is X belief true? What is the true nature of myself. How do I feel about, you know, mystery and uncertainty? What do I see, right, in my own deep waters? Being a witness to that. And also, right, with this Three of Cups, which often for me is a symbol of united will within the self, right? Because we do have different parts that get created along the way as we live our lives and survive things. There's the you know inner protector and the small child and the the part that wants to have fun and all of, right all of these various aspects of our own selves. And we can, you know, it's useful to see them, right, as parts, as individuals, and to be able to speak to them that way if you, you know, um, through, you know, a divinatory practice or a meditative practice or a therapeutic practice. But they are all us. And Right, which, what's really needed for creation, joyful, exuberant, heartfelt, successful creation, is to unite all those various parts so that we're not attempting to work against ourselves, that, that we're not in resistance. And I think you are, you are totally doing this, Scorpio, through this, this process. I think you are uh, doing amazing work through this process. So maybe right what you needed was a little, you know, encouragement. Yes, you're doing great. Carry on. Um, the the right the turn is coming when you can sort of reemerge. Right, when this upwelling of energy can happen. As you know, as we as we head onward. So I wish you all the best, Scorpio. I think you're you're uh, I think you're having a really interesting time and I think that <clears throat> you are about to you know, set out on a whole new adventure, cup in hand. I wish you all of the very best, and I will see you next time. So long, Scorpio.